look at how beautiful this revelation is. And it came to the most beautiful human being. And nobody knows this man's beauty better than you. And you're, do you're saying this about him? When Najmi Ida Hawa, Ma Dodna Sahibukum Wama Rawa. Behina TV doesn't just teach you about the Quran. You can also learn Arabic from a brilliant teacher. Ustad Naman Ali Khan has made this beautiful ancient language easy to understand. So you're not only improving your language skills, but your understanding of the Quran too. Tap now to check out Behina TV. Now we're going to talk about the second ayah. Very beautiful, uh, very heavy ayah of the, of the surah. Ma dalla sahibukum wa ma gawa. Your companion, your companion, is not lost and he's not deviated. Who is it talking about? I was talking about the Prophet. There's so many things to dissect here. Three words lost, companion, and deviated. We're going to dig deep into words in this series. And I, this will help you with the rest of your Quran study also because these words come everywhere, right? So I want you to learn something about Quran vocabulary today. Okay? Something you need, all of you need to know. Arabic is not like other languages. Arabic, a word has a meaning, and then it has something called secondary meanings. Okay? You know how you have like the main dish, you have the burger, but it also has the ketchup and the mustard and the mayonnaise? Well, every meal comes with some ketchup, mustard, and mayonnaise, and that's all part of the overall flavor, isn't it? So what happens is words in Arabic have a meaning, like dalla means to be lost but it has some secondary meanings and you have to keep those in mind to really get an idea of what the word means. So there's primary meanings and secondary meanings, okay? For, for pretty much every word in Arabic, there's, it's like that. Primary meanings and secondary meanings. Now, when you read an English translation of the Quran, what are they giving you? The primary meaning. What are they not giving you? The secondary meaning. And sometimes you have two different words that have the same primary meaning. But they have very different what? Secondary meanings. But when you're reading the English translation, you can't tell them apart because they only gave you what? The primary meaning. Which is why studying vocabulary carefully in the Quran is very helpful. Because Allah uses very precise words. So we're looking at the word balla to be lost. And we're going to look for the secondary meanings. The box, the white box means what? Who's this for? It's for me. But I'll give you something at the end. Now, balla shay'u khafiya wa ghaba. Balla means for something to hide and disappear. Forget about lost for now. One of its meanings is something gets, hit, gets hidden and something that disappears. Balla al ma'u fil laban. When the water gets mixed with the milk and you can't tell that water was ever there. It looks like pure milk. That's the dal of the water because it got lost and hidden and mixed in. Adlaltul mayta dafantuhu. When you bury the body, bury the animal or bury the person, and now you can't tell that there was even a grave here, then you've done idlal of it because you can't tell the dirt from the person underneath it. So ghayyabtahu, you made it disappear. Similarly, they would say water, you know, sometimes there's a rock, but underneath it, there's water, right? But you don't even know there's water underneath because it's covered by the rock. They would call that kind of water balal. They would call it that because it's hidden. It's disappeared. It, it's not seeing the eye. Similarly, if they saw rocks in a valley that nobody's ever seen, I'm sure there are rocks in that valley. Those rocks would be called baladil. So the word has a lot to do with being hidden, disappearing, mixed in. These are some of the secondary meanings inside this word. Uh, if you If you... Couldn't you were going to my house and you couldn't find it? Google lied to you, and you went. You're 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 at a McDonald's or something. You're like, you live at a McDonald's? No, no, I don't live there. Oh, I'm Bal. I was meant to be at A. I ended up at B. That that's actually Balal. Also, you ended up at the wrong location. By whose mistake? Your own. When you end up at the wrong mistake uh, uh, location on your own. Finally, ضَلَّ الشَّيْءِ يَضِلُّ ضَلَالًا أَيْ ضَعَى وَهَلَكَ ضَلَّ also means for something to go to waste. Something to go to waste or something to die or someone to die. 
like alam yaj'al kaydahum you know it alam yaj'al kaydahum fi tadlil from the same word he put it to waste he wasted it so being lost disappearing and being wasted and dying out and finally kathiru tatabbu' rajulun dal kathiru tatabbu' lid dalal a person who's gullible you can easily mislead them that person is called dal anyway here's what i want you to know about the word lost the white is the primary meaning the yellows are the secondary meaning okay that's that's going to be my format the white is the primary the yellow are the secondary so when two things appear as one like the milk and the water appear as one or the dirt and the dead body appear as one remember those examples so when two things become one and they appear as one when something's wasted or destroyed and when someone's gullible these are the meanings of dalla so what does it mean for the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam allah is saying your prophet is not confusing truth with falsehood presenting them as one his his, his speech and the quran and the speech of allah are separated they're not mixed together because part of the meaning of dalal is what two things become one this is not his speech this is god's speech he's not mixing them together he's not a lost cause they're like oh you were the smartest of us you were the most honorable you were the most reliable business person and this profit business you started it's so such a tragedy what a person we lost what a waste of a talent kunta fina marjuman like for another prophet it was said we had such high hopes in you you know no he's not lost you're the ones that are lost you're the ones that are wasting away not him and then the other is oh he's as good as dead he keeps this up and he's going to get what killed keep this up one day you'll make us angry enough we might just kill you yeah no he's not the one that's going to get killed he's not the one that's going to get destroyed also he must have come under the influence of somebody somebody must have told him to say this and he just fell for it somebody convinced him he's a prophet and now he thinks he's a prophet that would be that he's gullible all of that is being denied in what words ma dalla sahibukum ma dalla now let's go to the next word ghawa i will come back to sahib but i want you to understand ghawa al ghawa actually really interesting word i'll i'll go through this rather quickly uh, ghawi is locusts the swarm of locusts that come in the desert uh al basham min al laban when you have very overwhelming indigestion that's also called al ghawa really strong and like you can't move and your stomach's like going crazy because you have uh, it's actually lactose intolerance min al laban right so that's what it's referring to strong lactose intolerance then anything that covers and hovers over in the dark and it becomes invisible overshadowed so ma sataraka bi zalamihi that's also called aghwa from the same when people you know back in the day the arabs used to ambush each other like they used to hide behind rocks and the guys coming by and they all jumped him right so when they jumped him they would call that taghawa from the same origin of the word so ambushing and running over are you noticing a theme for all of these locusts hover over the darkness hovers over the pain overtakes the person the people get the guy get gets overtaken by an ambush you see that so this word has a lot to do with what being overwhelmed being overcast being overtaken fine then ardun mighwat when uh, 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 somebody gave you the wrong directions and you ended up in the wrong place but then this word has some really cool meanings one of one of my favorite meanings in this they used to make a hole a ditch in the ground and they used to take one of the baby goats and throw it in the hole okay the arabs made a deep hole throw the goat in the hole because they have a wolf problem so now they leave the goat there at night what's the wolf going to do going to jump in the hole and now they got the wolf right so they trapped the wolf that trap was actually called an ughwiya from the same origin from the same word so now we've got the meaning of a trap or an ambush and overwhelmed and then uh, ibn ashur adds fasadur ra'i wa ta'alluquhu bil batil when you have corrupt opinions and your over you, your your thoughts are overrun with false ideas that's called ghawa so what do you need to, oh you got a lot to write down you will just take a picture it's okay this is going to hurt your fingers but yes ghawa means deviated 
but it has to do with locusts and indigestion and overcasting darkness. All of that you can summarize as just being overcast, you know, and corruption in thought. But now let's get to what is it that, that is, this ayah is saying. Now we, we know two words, ghalla and qawa, being lost and being deviated, but the deviated has to be overwhelmed. He's overrun. You know how they said he's taken over by a jinn, right? He's possessed. Or his mind is overtaken by insanity. Or someone else is controlling him. He's overtaken by somebody else. All of that is inside Gawa. Or he's just confused on his own. That's inside Lalla. And if he's setting a trap, if he's a poet, and he's just using his poetry to make, make himself famous, or if he's just you know a magician and he's just using his sorcery, he's setting a trap for us. That's inside Gawa. You see? So both of those kinds of allegations are coming inside these words. Ooh.